Hello everybody and welcome to this update video. My name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer trying to develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me on the, this week's updates. Um, as usual, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my supporters. Um, without your financial ba backing, I would not be able to spend the hours that I can on uh, fi fixing Inkscape and trying to get these features in, in into Inkscape. So thank you all so much. Um, let's kick off with what we have installed this week. Firstly, I decided to keep the camera ang angle. People seem to like that. Um, you can actually see outside there's a blizzard. That is a uh, nor'easter, um, full-on winds churning up the sky blizzard. Um, so I hope you can get, you can see that from this ang angle. Um, what I got up to this week, uh, essentially there were two little things and then the big fat thing. So the two little things were Inkscape's about to run an about screen con contest. And what happens each year is, is that, uh, different art artists will come in, come in and they will, uh, design a, a graphic, which is then used inside of Inkscape as the about screen. We actually ship an about screen template, which these artists can use. The, uh, the about screen last year had three pan panels, one main one and then two side ones, which are like optional things where you could adjust your gra graphic to these other two for for formats. Yes, yeah, so the start screen and the, and the, and the website and the about screen. Uh, and they're slightly different formats. So, uh, this year, what I've done is I've, I've actually committed a fix so that each of those three panels is its own page, right? So I'm using the multi page support that I've added in to basically allow you to to have those three pages and you can select them. They're all labeled correctly. So I can, could get rid of the like textual labels that were just like on the cam canvas. They're now like a part of the page, which is great. Um, so in the next few, few weeks, uh, if you're an art, art artist, keep your eyes open for the about screen con contest. The next thing is the, uh, the, you know, when you get a broken image, you like embed an image and then you, it, the image is broken. Um, I needed to fix the, the, the aspect ratios because what, what was happening is, is that if you were renaming the file, like you changed the file po position on, on the disk, the aspect ratios would break. Uh, so I had to fix that. Um, but while I was there, I thought, well, I might as well update the, the graphics as well. And so I've updated the broken image graphics, uh, which is some, something people won't see very often. Um, but I think it looks nice. Um, and finally, let's get into the actual, the big fat issue, which is the extensions, di uh, not extensions, um, the export di dialogue. The export dialogue, I've actually got it up on the screen here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to walk through, uh, we can do it together, some of these export options. So first of all, you can see that um, the export di dialogue doesn't look particularly di different from last week. Um, a lot of the fixes have been un under the hood, a lot of code clean cleaning, um, especially to do with um, d uh, file names. So now if you go in here and you select the page and you select, you know, page two, you can actually see that it, it creates a page two dot PNG and you press export. It asks you for, the, for your options and you can actually see, I've, I put it on the screen there, I don't know if you can see it and it exports the page and, um, it remembers the page names. Okay, so with this particular export di dialog, um, you, you have the, the usual options, um, but now there are a couple of cha changes. One of the most important ones is that you now have the ability to select plain SVG and SVG and PDF. So if you wanna just export a single page as a P P PDF, um, you can do that, right? And it does exactly what you expect it to do. There was a lot of finagling to get the, the vector exporting to work in, in the same kinds of ways that a raster exporter would. So for example, if you had a, a custom selection and say, instead of saying you wanted a page, but you wanted to actually define what the left, right, top and bottom is for some reason. I can't imagine the, the workflow, but just because I can't imagine it does, doesn't mean we shouldn't support it. And in this case, uh, whatever you select, will actually be uh, in the PDF file, right? That, that'll be the size of the P PDF. So it kind of tries to do exactly what you expect. Um, the same thing goes for if you s select objects and you know, if you've got a page 
and you can see here it says B. And then uh, you, you can export that, uh, let's see, selection, right, which is fine. And you've got this little checkbox that says export selected only, and that makes sense. But say if you wanted to select the page and only the, the, the selected on that page, so basically the size of the page, but with those objects, um, and you wanted to, to do it as a vector, uh, previously, you wouldn't be able to do, do that. It would just export the whole page, all the objects on the page. But now it does the correct thing and only exports the, the selected objects. So a lot of the work has been involved in just making it consistent and to do exactly what you expect it to do. Um, the same thing goes for the batch exporter, um, which you can see here now allows you to select. Say if we wanted to select plain SVGs, we can export each of the, uh, the items out as plain SVGs. Uh, we can also export them all out as PNGs, and yeah, let's grab all these, right? And you can see it's not asking too much for the for your options. It asks you once for for the options, um, and then it does exactly what you expect it to do. Um, there's a lot of clean cleaning up. A uh, big thank you and a big shout shout out to all of the people who have been helping test these um, the start and di dialogue these last two two weeks. Um, but it's pretty much ready. There's a actually a bunch of uh, cleanup that could be theoretically done to this di dialogue, but we're, we're rapidly ro approaching feature freeze. So um, I'm going to call, call it where it is. And um, yeah, let me know in the com comments what you, what you think and what you feel. Do give the um, the, al the the alpha da download and see. And tell me what you think. Okay, let's stop this. And now. And in other Inkscape news, where I can tell you about all of the stuff that I didn't do, um, but other passionate contributors to Inkscape have been getting up to this week, let's go through some of the list. Um, I've moved my computer so it's in front, in front of me so I can read the notes. Uh, hopefully that's not distracting in, in, in the edit. Uh, first, first of all, Mike uh, Kalowski, who is a champion of just getting stuff done. He's fixed the, the dock resizer. He's um, rendered mark, mark markers created from clone objects fix. Uh, he's done an entire glyph pre, pre, preview for the SVG font editor, which you should probably check, and check out if you do font, font editing. Um, he's fixed the page col colors if, if the desk color isn't defined. He's fixed the drop sh and shadows if you invert the Y axis. Um, he's removed all toolbar positioning uh, options, which were causing real headaches. Um, and and a ton tons of other things like you can see his activity all, all over the place. Um, now let's see if I can pronounce this name correctly. This is uh, Minissa uh, Diedrich. Um, they have added a new color se selector. So there is you know how Inkscape has different colors. Well, uh, now we have a, a hue saturation UV color um, type. This is apparently a, a rare color selector. Apparently, there's only one other pro program that supports this. So it's kind of, kind, of, kind of exciting. There was also a whole bunch of uh, cleanup and fixes that went along with this color selector. I, I know they've been working on this for, for like a, a number of weeks. Um, so well, well done for getting that actually past, past the line. Like getting the feature and then actually doing all the clean, cleanup. It's that cleanup part that's actually really hard. Um, so congratulations. Um, Habir has been busy as usual cleaning up L L LPEs, live path effects, more fixes, uh, more fixes to the um, tabs. So he did a, a allow retain close button with an I I I iconized notebook, which is great. Um, Thomas Holder did a fix for the the symbols that have a view box, um, which it just basically allows the width and height to be defined by by a view box. Um, Tamhung uh, Bar that I mentioned last week was doing verb removal. The verbs are gone. They are out of here. All the old code, Tav has destroyed it all. Um, and it's looking really nice. Now, the verb removal has probably caused a lot of issues. So in the, um, in the alpha, when you go in, if you see menus that are disabled or stuff that crashes, don't worry about it. Uh, this is kind of expected. Just, uh, Try your best to report the the issues when when you find them. Um, he also uh, implemented a new debus system. It's a it's a way of 
creating an API to Inkscape. It's not well used, but uh, this allows us to get a cheaper DBus implementation that doesn't have like thousands of lines of code, which is great. Cl cleanup is always good. Uh, Nathan Lee, down under, um, as well as all of his usual I issues tra tra tracking, which has been really good. Um, he's been preparing the 1.1.2 release. So like I talk a lot about the 1.2 with all the fe features and stuff, but he's been getting a lot of fixes from 1.2 back into 1.1 so that when 1.1.2 comes out in about a week or two, uh, you will be able to enjoy the fixes, at least like the crash fixes and stuff a lot, a lot uh, uh, earlier. I mean, he's pr practically been storming that, that, that release. So, um, thanks, Nathan. Nathan. I'm sure like there's a lot of users who will really appreciate having that point for re release. Um, he also fixed like the CDR import. And um, he re-enabled re some outset and um, symmetric uh, offset in the menus. Um, and I, he fixed a, an extensions bug with pipelines. Uh, let's see, there's another difficult name. Uh, Vabhav Malik. Um, he fixed the right click and clicking while using the eraser tool. Uh, it no longer does anything. Uh, Diedrich van Lierup, uh reinstated snap delays in the selector tool and fix the snapping regressions that have happened since 1.1. Uh, 1, 1. 1. Um, Raphael, oh man, C. Jack Kowski. Uh, he he's been fixing calligraphic uh, blots. Uh, this particular fix that he put in has, was, was with the locked layers. And finally, uh, Jessica Clark, First contributor um, fixed the PixBuff to PNG. Basically, there was a deep mathematical problem with the way in which our PNG generation inside of Inkscape was happening. Um, didn't affect you if you were just using RGB, which was fine. But as soon as you started doing stuff in grayscale uh, with huge bitmaps, you would quickly find yourself in some problems. Plus, it, it, anything that would cause a crash needs to be fixed. And this fix was really nice. So well well done, Jessica. Um, that's about it for this week. Uh, thank you for jo joining me. Um, I'm sorry if this video was a little choppy. Um, I've had some technical difficulties t today as well as the storm. So um, thank, thank you all and I'll see you all next week.